Hey guys, hope you guys are doing good and hopefully things are starting to get back to normal for you. Um, I know here in Alberta, um, things are starting to reopen again. So life is kind of starting to resemble something that it used to be, uh, not quite. We've been staying busy. We bought a dog. Uh, his name is Benji. He's a one year old uh, retriever cross. You can check out some pictures of him on my Instagram page if you want to see him. So we are loving him. He's been a great addition to our family. Um, but today we are going to be talking about vaccines after GBS. I know vaccines can be a very controversial hot topic subject, but I think it's very important discussion to have, uh, especially with everything that's going on with COVID-19 and the likelihood that there will be a vaccine coming out in the coming months or a year or so, um, and whether or not we would get that. And I know I get a lot of people that ask me that question. So there's a lot of risks and there's a lot of uh, positives. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So obviously the biggest benefit to a vaccine is that it's going to help protect people from various um, diseases and illnesses that can cause serious health implications and can even cause death. So obviously that's pretty straightforward as to why a vaccine would be given and, and why we wanna protect ourselves. Now, for those of you that don't know, and maybe some of you do know, but there are complications and there are risks to getting vaccines. And one of those risks is Guillain-Barre syndrome and CIDP. And um, usually if that is to happen, if it's gonna come on after a vaccine, it's usually happens with between two to four week period of getting a vaccine. And how that happens is the exact same way that Guillain-Barre is triggered by anything. Um, it causes the body to produce antibodies and those antibodies go on to attack healthy nerve cells. Um, those are the myelin sheath uh, in your peripheral nerves. So some of the most common uh, vaccines that trigger GBS that I myself have heard of, uh, influenza, so the flu shot, uh, H1N1, which is swine flu, and um, the uh, HPV, so it's like the Gardasil um, vaccine. So those are the most common ones that I have heard. I have also heard of like one, one person getting it from tetanus, um, as well as somebody else I talked to had gotten it um, from a rabies shot. So um, I think there are others that could potentially trigger it, but those are just the ones that I'm aware of. And I do wanna just point out that no matter what your trigger is, whether it's a vaccine or for me giving birth, um, it's our bodies that screw up. It wasn't giving birth that causes these complications or the vaccine that causes these complications. It's within our own immune system where the, air, the problems lie. So the chance of getting GBS from a vaccine is very rare. I think it's about one in a million people uh, that get a flu shot each year will go on to get GBS. So it, it it's, doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And and if you look at the pamphlet that you get, if you get a flu shot, it will be listed on the bottom as a risk, usually in some sort of fine print. Uh, in the US, it's actually the number one condition that is paid out by the um, National Vaccine Compensation Program of some sort. So in the US, they have a program that if you were to get sick or you were to get GBS, for example, you could get compensation from it. Um, in Canada, we have no such program. I do have a friend that is in the GBS community here in Canada that is actually trying to get that change. So if you get GBS from a vaccine, um, they're trying to start a program for that. So you can actually Google that. His name is Bob Martin and just Google um, vaccine or GBS or something and his name should come up. I think it's very important for people to know that the flu itself, uh, influenza, actually triggers more case of GBS than the actual flu shot itself. So for that reason, the GBS Foundation um, and many, many specialists and neurologists do recommend that if you have had GBS and you didn't get it from a flu shot, that you should get the flu shot every year to protect yourself from getting um, the flu. And that applies to other vaccines as well, that if you didn't get um, GBS from a specific vaccine, then they would consider it safe to get it down the road. Now, that being said, getting a vaccine is a very personal decision. So I personally don't get vaccines and I don't get the flu shot every year. And that's just my personal choice. Um, I would rather not inject myself with something that is known to trigger GBS. It's just a risk that I am not willing to take. I know it's rare, but when it's rare and it happens to you, it doesn't feel very rare. So that's my choice. Um, I choose not to get it. I would rather take the risk and hope that I just don't get the flu, which I really haven't gotten. And I think everyone's personal choice is really gonna come down to their own specific circumstances. For example, if you lost somebody in your family to influenza, well, you're probably gonna feel very strongly about the flu shot. 
if you've um, got GBS from a flu shot, you may feel very strongly against it. So I think nobody should be judged for the choice that they make and people shouldn't push their agendas on each other. I also believe that people need to be made aware of the complications that can happen from these vaccines. Um, for example, GBS. Uh, yeah, they're on the pamphlets that majority of people don't even read. And I think probably all doctors, maybe, maybe not all, but most, give out a vaccine without even mentioning the complications or GBS. I can't count how many times um, either a nurse or my doctor or somebody working in my doctor's clinic has offered me a vaccine and they haven't even looked at my medical history. They, they, if they did, they would see that I had GBS and that it's a, a possible risk, so maybe I shouldn't have it. So that's my concern. I think that every single person should be told the risks, including GBS, before they get any vaccine. So we already know that COVID-19 has triggered some cases of GBS. I've heard of several in Italy, um, a couple in the US, and I imagine that it will just continue on as the year goes by. Um, but they will be developing a vaccine and it's very likely that a vaccine will trigger cases of GBS as well. So will I be getting uh, that vaccine, the COVID-19? Highly unlikely. So again, that's my personal choice. I would rather take the risk, hope that I don't get COVID-19 at all, or if I do, it's a very mild case and everything is fine, rather than inject me with something and hope that it won't trigger a relapse. So when it comes to vaccine guys and making that decision, educate yourself, learn about the risks for all the different uh, vaccines that are out there, talk to your doctor about it, um, get his opinion, and then make the decision based on yourself and your own personal circumstances. So I'm just gonna end my video with these two questions. So if you have had GBS or CIDP, do you get vaccines now? And secondly, if uh, a COVID-19 or when the COVID-19 vaccine comes available, will you get it? Thanks guys for watching and we'll talk to you soon, bye.